Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. So as you recall, as we go through this podcast, we're going through each of the systems on the published FSBPT's content outline. This is what delineates the number of questions in each section on the exam. And so this is a great way as we go through the podcast to get a little bit of each section, helping you to understand not only the content, but also how to study and what the depth of material you need to know is for test day. Before we get to our practice question, just a quick reminder, it's not too late. If you want to grab a copy of our crash course, our PT and PTA crash courses, we run this three weeks before every test day. It includes a selection of recordings that are, are especially pertinent to the exam. Plus, we have live sessions twice a week going through practice questions. Great way to boost your studies in the last few weeks until test day. Definitely not too late to jump in there. Be sure to check it out. You can find all the details over at ptfinalexam.com. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. Again, related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. As per usual, I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. All right, here we go. At the beginning of a physical therapy intervention, a patient's heart rate is measured to be 75 beats per minute. After explaining the interventions and discussing the, discussing the patient's diagnosis, the patient reports that their heart rate feels like it is racing away. The therapist then rechecks the patient's heart rate, which is observed to be 220 beats per minute. Which of the following interventions is most important to complete first with this patient? So we've got at the beginning of PT, a patient's heart rate is measured to be 75 beats per minute. After explaining the interventions and discussing the patient's diagnosis, the patient reports that their heart rate feels like it is racing away. The therapist then rechecks the patient's heart rate, which is observed to be 220 beats per minute. Which of the following interventions is most important to complete first with this patient? Option one, initiate the emergency response system. Option two, instruct the patient to perform a valsalva maneuver. Three, instruct the patient to breathe deeply and steadily. And four, refer the patient to their primary care physician for a cardiac workup. So again, the answer options here are initiate the emergency response system, instruct the patient to perform a valsalva maneuver, instruct the patient to breathe deeply and steadily, and four, refer the patient to their primary care physician for a cardiac workup. So this, I've actually seen several questions written about this, so this is an important one to keep in mind. When it comes to supraventricular tachycardia or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, this is when you have a sudden rise in heart rate that is not related to anything activity-wise. So consider it, it's not related to, to exercise. You would not expect it from, again, this patient is, you, you've been doing some education intervention and they go from 75 beats per minute to 220 beats per minute. This is pretty much the definition of the sudden onset or paroxysm, paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. So the correct answer is to counteract that with autonomic, with the autonomic nervous system, primarily through the valsalva maneuver. So typically, this is described as instructing the patient to try coughing or breath holding with a valsalva maneuver. Now, the purpose of the valsalva, the end result of the valsalva, is that it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, so it causes a decrease in heart rate. And I've actually seen this in patients that uh, quite literally had a patient at 220 beats per minute and instructing the patient to perform a valsalva maneuver resulted in a return to a normal sinus rhythm. And so in this case, the first and best thing to do is to instruct the patient to, to perform a valsalva maneuver. This is again with the clarity that there's no other instigating cause. Again, in the question, it simply describes that they were normal and then you talked with them and then they were abnormal. One of the, uh, one of the primary factors in causing paroxysmal atrial tachycardia could include emotional factors. It could also include overexertion and hyperventilation. So instructing the patient to perform deep breaths, so to breathe deeply and steadily, this hyperventilation would likely only worsen, so this hyperpnea would likely worsen the paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. So the best and first answer here is to perform the Valsalva maneuver. Clearly, if the patient started to exhibit signs of cardiac arrest or they had signs of, of poor cardiac output, at that point, you'd probably initiate the emergency response system. It is a rather emergent situation, so it's unlikely that you just, just you know, send them out the door and refer them to their primary care. Likely, the case would be that if you were able to return them to their, to their normal sinus rhythm, the next step would be to then communicate with the physician, have them either schedule, schedule follow-up, make sure that there's no other instigating cause 
for the paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. But the first and best thing is to try to return them back to normal sinus rhythm. Best way of doing that is with a Valsalva maneuver. Because again, the point of the Valsalva maneuver, typically we avoid it, but it does have a benefit in that it can reduce heart rate. It has a strong effect on the parasympathetic nervous system as an end result after you let the Valsalva maneuver go. So again, the instruction to the patient would be to try coughing or breath holding with a Valsalva maneuver. Usually perform that for about 30 seconds and then recheck and you could perform that a couple of times. And then at that point, if, if nothing is fixing it, then maybe you're starting to think, all right, maybe there's some medication on board. Maybe there's some other some other factor that you are not familiar with. And at that point, you would start to activate the emergency response system because you're not obviously not making any change on it or making any, having any effect on it in the short term. So again, back to this question, they're, so, they're showing signs of paroxysmal, uh, paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, also known as supraventricular tachycardia. It's where a focus of the atria, you have this atrial focus that starts to hyper... <laughs> you go into tachycardia. It, it's excessively beating, which causes the tachycardia. So anyway, all that to say, a long way to say that if the heart rate jumps up for no other known reason, you may try to push it back down with the parasympathetic nervous system. And the best way to do that is with Valsalva. Incidentally, the other way to do it, it would require monitoring. It's described in the textbook is you can do carotid sinus massage. And so that carotid sinus massage, what you're doing is you're activating the carotid baroreceptors, which also activate the parasympathetic nervous system. But again, that's a, a bit more involved than what we're talking about here. But just of note, it's also one of the causes uh, or the one of the primary factors in activating the parasympathetic nervous system or vagal activity so that you can reduce heart rate and blood pressure. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and bring today's session to a conclusion. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me. As we go through this podcast, I know we're almost to episode 200. Uh, some of you have been with me for for almost all 200. And I, <laughs> if you have, let me know. It'd be fun to hear from you. I know that a lot of you are on a three-month or a six-month study cycle. Uh, a lot of you are listening to this while you're exercising, while you're in the car, on your way to your clinical. Uh, you're doing good things. Uh, if I could just encourage you, uh, encourage you to just keep keep going. You're doing good things. It's good and noble what you're doing. So keep that in mind, and then uh, that hopefully takes away some of the pain of the NPTE. And if you haven't yet, it really just takes a second. Go over and leave us a review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to this podcast. I mean, speaking frankly, it helps in the algorithms. We're trying to get the word out, help people to, to know about PT final exam. But it's a great way to help other students as well. So quite literally, as a free resource, the podcast is a great way to share and and really help others on the journey as well. So just taking a moment and doing that, not only does me a solid, but also really helps other students down the road to be able to find this and take advantage of the content. So, all right, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Thanks everyone. Good luck in your studies and your clinicals, your exercise, whatever it is you're doing. We'll crane fist pumps all around. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Have a fabulous day, everyone. I'll talk to you soon.